Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel. So this is just the patch note video. This isn't including what everything is actually included in the aftermarket event. Uh, this is literally just the patch notes on set event. So we're going to slide right into those. Now, with the legend meta, we've got some changes coming. So with Rampart, they've increased the rate at which Sheila's bullet spread tightens up to kind of help her a little bit. Uh, Bloodhound has technically received a nerf. They updated Bloodhound's tactical cooldown whenever your ultimate is active. And so it used to be 6 seconds and now it's been moved to 8 seconds. They felt like the 6 was too powerful so now that they're going into 8 seconds to see how that, you know, works out. Pathfinder sort of received a buff but kind of. Technically, I guess he did. He did receive a buff. You want to get technical about it. So your cooldown is still 35 seconds. But it now has more of a distance cooldown. So your cooldown is now based on the distance that Pathfinder traveled during his grapple. If you get like a short pull, then you'll have like a 10 second cooldown with a maximum of 35 seconds. But you're going to have to swing a long distance to get there. So they probably time it by meters, you know. I would assume. We'll test that later and I'll get like an actual idea on how, you know, how it does it. So... They thought about moving it to 25 seconds as a compromise, which would be nice. But, oh well, we'll keep it as, yeah. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, they also did an update to Wraith's sprint animation. So now she no longer has her, you know, kind of patented like Naruto run. She's not bent over as much, kind of running like Naruto does. She's up a little bit more, so that kind of gives her more of a hitbox whenever she's running towards you. So... You know, I feel like that's, it, it kind of sucks because that's like a piece of her character, but I also think that it's like an apt, you know, if they want to nerf her again, man, like, I don't, I don't know, man, it just feels like they, I don't know, like, I hurt, I hate, I hate, I hate all these nerfs that they keep doing to like the original characters. And it just kind of feels like, oh, we're trying to increase the pick rate of, you know, our newer characters. But just make your newer characters better and it will be cool. Uh, so Crypto's, Crypto now has his drone can now open loot vaults if Crypto has a key in his inventory. So obviously it consumes the key. So that's kind of nice. But if you're not at the vault, like, unless it does a quick open, that's the only reason I would see, like, you to use the, the vault key with your drone. Because that is useful. Uh, it does the same thing with, you know, like, revives and things like that. So with Loba, they increased the range of her ultimate and passive from 3,100 units to 4,500 units. So 150% now, basically. Uh, Loba now starts the match with her ultimate half charge. That's nice. I like that idea because being able to do her boutique early is definitely useful whenever you're, for whenever you want to, like, loot and then, you know, get... Uh, the weapons have seen a couple of changes here. So with the Devotion, they have increased the hip fire spread at a base level and also increasing the spread added while firing. So that's all up on the Devotion there for the Spitfire. They've tried to keep the hip fire numbers consistent uh, with all the weapons on like the same class. So they increased the hip fire spread to the Spitfire as well. Uh, but to compensate for that, they're reducing the horizontal recoil of the Spitfire. So, you introduce a character or legend who's like gets her passive buffs, you know, LMGs, and then you nerf LMGs. Okay. Uh, so, the triple take, uh, they have nerfed it a little bit. It has a reduced fire rate from 1.4 to 1.3 now. So, that's going to hurt a little bit. I don't uh, disagree with that. I feel like it pops off a little quick um, for, you know, what it is. I like it, though. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Uh, so now we have a few quality of life changes. There's now a loot prompt, which uh, shows how much damage an Evo shield has accumulated. So you can make it a better decision as far as, like, when replacing it. Because me, I always just kind of take a look, you know, like, I check my damage and then sometimes I'll replace it if it's worth it. Or I'll use those shield cells if not. So this kind of lets you do it a little quicker so you can see immediately, which is useful. Uh, hopefully, whenever it's in the death box, it still has that same little uh, indicator. Otherwise, that's going to you know, that's gonna suck a little. Um, so now 
you're able to you know switch to the same level of armor no problem if it's closer to evolving so that's kind of nice um also there um if somebody needs it if they like say that they need a particular item then now whenever you find that item uh on the map then it'll have like a little ping indicator for you to ping it because somebody needs it i'll have a little guy with his hand up like hey man i needed that so it's kind of useful uh, so now there's a performance delay display update. Uh, so it's a new option that activates a panel that appears in the top right corner of your screen during a match. So it, the data that is displayed is the frames per second, the latency, the loss, the choke, and the in and out. So the frames per second is how quickly your game is rendering frames. The latency is the time in milliseconds it takes for your game client to communicate to the server and back. Loss indicates the percentage of packet data lost per second on its way to you, and then choke indicates the percentage of the packet data congestion on its way from the server. In and out is the amount of data that's being sent from and to the server. If you're noticing persistent issues while playing, the display may help you out and them uh, on how to identify what's going on. So that's pretty useful. That's what it. That, that, that's pretty nice. I, I like that. I would really like a damage counter. Just saying. So an anonymous mode has now been added in the options where it anonymizes your name in the champion presentation, the obituary, and other locations of living opponents. So that's kind of nice. You have level 0 Evo armor will now appear as empty in the inventory so you can ping to request for armor. There are, no, there are more banners placed around World's Edge to better support Crypto's ability to see nearby squads in his drone. That's useful. Um, out of bounds, this, so the out of bounds timer no longer refreshes each time you enter a new out of bounds area. The timer is now a fixed amount of time, 30 seconds. So if you enter a new out of bounds areas, the timer will steadily decrease. However, if you only have five seconds left, the timer will keep refreshing up to that five second mark. So you get five seconds. That's kind of nice. So that should work against people who are exploiting the timer, um, but it also lets you get down if you accidentally land up there. So I think that's nice. Uh, the random favorite selection has been added for music and load screen categories. Thank you. Uh, the hollow sprays will now remember which players like them and will display a count to the owner. This also prevents other players from spamming like on the hollow spray. So the legend tokens have been minimized to a tooltip in the lobby. You hover over your currency to see your amount. Alright, I guess they don't think too much about legend tokens either. Uh, there's a few bug fixes here. So with our bug fixes in the general category, they have added the ability to ping the satellite dish at Crypto's map room from the dropship. They have... What? <laughs> okay. Dang. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I guess you couldn't ping it before. So with Gibraltar, they fixed an issue with the bubble shield looking white in certain conditions. Lifeline, they fixed a couple of issues for her. So they fixed an issue with the Guardian Angel skin having a stretched neck when using Sheila. <laughs> I wish I could have seen that. Uh, they fixed an issue where care packages would not be allowed to be placed on certain parts of capacitor, rig, or salvage in Kings Canyon. Yeah, I ran into that one or two times, but it's nothing, you know, doesn't kill it. Uh, so with Caustic, they fixed uh, Caustic's barrels from being placed at an angle on shipping crates. Mirage has a couple of fixes. They fixed an issue that prevented Mirage decoys from being pinged. They also fixed an issue that did not allow Crypto's drone to highlight decoys. Octane. So, man, Octane has like this bug where you use his stem and he doesn't like run fast. He, he runs slow, actually. It's like he ODs. I don't Like, if that was part of the character, it'd be kind of neat, um, honestly. But, like, it's not. It's never been made a part of the character. Um, but that's not what they fixed here. They fixed a visual issue that removed Revenant's shadow form from a player after jumping off an Octane jump pad. And they fixed an issue with the jump pad clipping into the ground in certain areas. So, with Crypto, they fixed an issue with his drone not detecting Watson's security fences. They fixed an audio issue with survey beacons sometimes making very little noise. When using it as Crypto's drone, yeah, because it's immediate, so it just goes doom. It's useful. <laughs> they fixed an issue with his drone not taking damage from directly below. Uh, Revenant had a. They fixed an issue with the HUD of the replicator staying on the screen when the totem effect wears off. Uh, they fixed quite a few things for Loba and Rampart. My word. Okay, so for Loba, 
They fixed an inconsistency with teleporting on a supply ship, and they also fixed an issue allowing teleporting into drills around lava fissure. They fixed an issue preventing teleporting on certain terrain in staging. For Rampart, they fixed an issue with the doors closing when dismounting a place Sheila in a doorway. They fixed amp cover from floating in the air when placed on a supply ship. They fixed an issue with being able to place Sheila on loot bins. They fixed an issue with the longbow, triple take, mastiff, and sentinel not always receiving the amp cover buff. They fixed an issue with amp cover being able to be placed at bad angles around the map. Cool. They fixed an issue with the amp cover not being destroyed by the initial blast of the charged rifle. They fixed an issue with the bullets getting amped up before they cross the amped wall from certain angles. And with the L Star, they fixed an issue with overheating occurring when firing a single shot from the weapon multiple times. And that does it for your patch notes. So, with the patch notes, um, now obviously if there's something that in this video that you were expecting to see that you didn't see, there's another video coming up that actually tackles the crossplay, um, the limited time mode, and the. Uh, uh, event prize track and you know the collection event for the 24 pieces and kind of you know break down that see what's what um you know hey man i want to know what you think <laughs> about this season you know what i'm saying like it's it, it's been a while let me know how you're doing in season six let me know how you've fared so far let me know if you're enjoying it if you're hating it what's up with it let me know how you're feeling about costa getting his uh heirloom and you know let me know how you feel who, who do you want next you know what heirloom do you want next let me know down in the comments below as always thank you so much for watching catch you guys later and i'm pretty sure that's well 12 minutes